Times are tough for motorcycle gear manufacturers. So tough, in fact, that they've started to make pajamas. Personally, I'm not complaining because my productivity has gone through the roof as a result. I can roll out of bed, hop on my hog, and ride to work wasting no time with that getting dressed nonsense. But luckily, I usually wake up from that nightmare to find that I still ride a Yamaha and that motorcycle gear manufacturers insist that this is called a base layer. Say what you want, I'm still going to nap in it. Oh, and did I mention that these pajamas are up to the task of falling off your bike? So, I know I've probably already sold you on this incredible outfit with my brilliant sales pitch, but let me actually explain what a base layer is. Because up until now, I just assumed it was one of those tight, silky shirts that made removing your leathers easier after a track day when you're all hot, sweaty, and sticky. Because it turns out there's a bit more to it than that. Even Pandomoto, the makers of this, don't seem to be too sure about the name of these. Because this shirt is the Shell uh, O2. And these leggings, yes, leggings, manly I know, are the skin of, uh, let me think, O3s. And the easiest way to describe them is that they're kind of like the innards of a pair of motorcycle jeans, but without the Jean X Terrier. They have the rugged Ballistex material that resists abrasion and pockets for knee, hip, elbow, shoulder, and back armor, all while being a tight fit so that it can slip underneath other clothing. Which in my opinion gives you two strategies to work with. Number one, you can now wear any regular clothes you want while still being protected in a crash. Or secondly, you could add an additional layer of protection to your usual motorcycle gear. So personally, I think motorcycle gear looks absolutely awesome. But of course I do, I'm a biker. However, I can appreciate the fact that not everybody feels the same way about it as I do. Some people would prefer to be able to wear whatever they want, or more importantly, whatever they need to wear to the office, for example. However, hovering above a tarmac without any protection is kind of harrowing. So something like this could give you the best of both worlds. It's definitely not for everyone, but there is without a doubt a market for it. I don't know how I haven't come across this sooner, because it seems like a good idea. And for once, I get to share a piece of gear with you that even the girls will appreciate because both these items are unisex. Finally, I can please the five women who watch my videos. It does look rather strange, but it kind of needs to to do its job. An elastic strap around your thumb stops it from sliding up your arms, making it easy to put clothes over the top. And the same system wraps around your feet. Another layer in summer sounds like an awful idea, but it tries its best to keep the heat down with plenty of ventilation and meshy materials. The slippery material also has multiple benefits. Yes, it would help you easily remove leathers after a hot and sweaty track day, but it will also help prevent skin shear in the event of a slide, if you were to wear it underneath other gear. That is when motorcycle gear sticks to the skin rather than freely moves over the top of it during a slide, ultimately shearing off the top layer of your skin. It won't kill you, but it is as painful as it sounds. So like all bike gear, it has that fancy marketing to try to sound amazing. The leggings, for example, have the higher AA rating for a 35 meter slide. And as impressive as that sounds, and as much as I don't want to slide that far, even a fancy material will give in eventually. Which is why armor is so important in contact areas, like the knees, hips, elbows and shoulders. The leggings have two height options for Sastec knee armor. It's pretty good at conforming to your body so as to not be too uncomfortable. And it will take considerably longer to wear through one of these in a slide. It's also less likely to move around during a slide due to the tight fit. One of my pet peeves with bike jeans is having to remove and reinsert armor just to wash them. It's much easier to turn these light pajamas inside out than a bulky pair of jeans. They're also easier to wash as a result since bike jeans with 20 layers of different materials get about 17 times heavier as soon as they get wet, reducing the amount you can wash. 
However, don't get caught up in the positives just yet, because full disclosure, Pandamoto sent me these items for free so that I could share my thoughts with you guys. But to be honest, I've been pretty harsh on some of their products in the past, and to my surprise, they still keep sending me stuff. Dare I say, they actually appreciate honest feedback. But what company in their right mind would appreciate that? So you've probably guessed why I wear so many layers of clothing by now. Because if I wear a pair of underwear, maybe you'll want to buy a pair for yourself and I'll earn commission. Maybe if you see me wearing life-changing socks, you'll want your own pair and I'll earn commission. Hence the base layer, the riding jeans, the t-shirt, the boots, the jacket, the helmet and the gloves. But the truth is that if you bought one of everything that I'm wearing right now, I would probably have enough money to go and buy something of a different brand. And yet, I haven't. So either that says something good about Pandomoto, or I'm just cheap. But I'll let you decide. Because although I can tell you the good and the bad about a piece of gear, you should never buy anything based on what I or any other YouTuber said about it. You can use it to sway your decision, and I do hope that if I told you something was complete rubbish, you wouldn't then waste your money on it, but ultimately, you should know whether you actually need something or not before you watch a video about it. So if you want a few reasons not to get an armored base layer like this, I can help. The leggings bunch up behind your knees, and that's uncomfortable for the first three miles before you forget about it. The shirt rides up if you're seated for long periods of time, but a quick tug fixes that. The thumb strap is a nuisance for everyday off-the-bike tasks, like washing your hands. But the most annoying thing is that I struggle to access my Apple Watch to pay for petrol. Bloody first world problems. And there's the usual issue with biker gear. It's expensive. I can, however, see both sides of the argument. You can't even wear it on its own, so why is it so expensive? Or it makes my regular clothes suitable for riding. That's worth the money. It really depends on your perspective and what you need. So if this enables more people to ditch the car and ride a motorcycle to work while still being safe and being able to dress how they need to, then it has my vote. But anyway, let me know if something like this has a spot in your gear arsenal and I'll see you on the next ride.